Hey there. <gasps> oh look, it's a brand new and original concept. Ew, fuck. Everyone says that the games industry nowadays is completely void of fresh ideas and relies constantly on rehashing existing ones. Yeah. And it's kinda easy to see why. People are already familiar and attached to pre-existing franchises and IPs. They're more likely to get excited about them and engaged in them as opposed to something new. And as much as people rag on the lack of creativity within the industry with so many sequels and remakes, I still think there's plenty of benefits to them as well. With sequels, it's generally the developers simply being resourceful. You have all the assets and the engine, why let it go to waste? And hey, also use it as an opportunity to build on what already existed, maybe fix some things that didn't quite work last time, improve what was already there. Or you know, take the piss and release an entry every year where the biggest upgrade is the graphical capability to render every wrinkle on someone's scrote. I also think in many ways the same can be said about remakes. Looking back at video games history is extremely telling of how far technology has advanced within the last few decades. Developers were limited by the tech of the time, so maybe going back to certain games with the resources available to us now to allow us to fully realize these visions or maybe have a different take on it. It's not such a bad idea. Now normally publishers don't see it that way, they use it to cash in on nostalgia because we as gamers lap it up like the gullible bitches we are. Video game sequels and remakes are just an inevitability whether we ask for it or not. So I'm just going to embrace the devil of unoriginality and share some of my most desired sequels and remakes. What series would I like to see get a new entry and what classics do I feel should get the modern remake treatment? Of course this is all purely hypothetical and I'm not going to go into fair the obvious picks, like oh no, what if they don't make another 3D Mario? So with that, these are my most wanted sequels and remakes. Wow. Now this may come as a surprise to many who watch my videos, but I kinda like Crash Bandicoot. The most recent entry, Crash 4 It's About Time, I think was an incredible return to form for the franchise. I would even go as far to say when looking at it from a gameplay, level design and control perspective, it's the best game in the series. I think the core game is near platforming perfection platforming perfection with a bunch of tedious, repetitive, bullshit completionist padding, but platforming perfection nonetheless. Though I say near, cause of course there are some frustrating elements. The animal riding controls pre-patch were just broken, the hidden box placement got annoying as opposed to clever, and some of the other playable characters had some control quirks. As great as I thought the game was, there was of course room for improvement, just to iron out the kinks because there are some blatant ones. I'd love a potential Crash 5 to solve many of these issues, trim the excessive fat of the padded out completionist content and focus it more on great level design. Tweak those smaller gripes and I think we'd have the perfect Crash game on our hands. On top of that, since Crash 4 experimented with the map style of Crash 1 and having the masks as opposed to power-ups, I'd like a sequel to maybe have a go at the warp room style of level progression again, but of course with some new twists. And maybe bring back the permanent power-ups from beating bosses, expand upon them and give us more ways to build on Crash's moveset. Crash 4 has set the stage to refine things to perfection and try different ideas for the next installment. Ah, also, I want Dingo Dar to say Yazoo! Speaking of classic PS1 mascots, let's drag another one from the grave and force him into second life. Yes, I'm talking about the bitch who wishes he was Yoshi. Croc Legend of the Gobbos is one of those games that everyone seems to have nostalgic memories of, but isn't really held in too high a regard as one of the best PS1 games ever. It's a simple point A to point B 3D platformer where you have to collect these little fluffy knob sacks to beat it. It's nothing that special when all said and done, yet for some reason that I just can't quite put my finger on, the game just has this really pleasant and nostalgic charm to it, despite not having played it that much at all as a kid. It is however very flawed in certain areas, mainly with one of the most important aspects of any platformer, the controls. It has this tank-like movement, so instead of fluently darting around the level, you have to carefully maneuver croc, making for at times really finicky, annoying and heavy-ass platforming. And it really does kill a lot of the enjoyment from the game, and I think if this was overhauled, it would make it way more playable. Given that the game isn't the most popular, I think something along the lines of a simple budget remake that reworks the controls and gives it a little graphical glow up, I think it would make for a nice pleasant little nostalgia trip for many and hopefully bring back another forgotten face of the PS1. You have to wonder at what point the game industry was struggling for ideas when they settled on f**k 
it, let's just catch some monkeys and shit. Ape Escape was one of those weirdly creative and wonderfully fun franchises that I feel is really lacking from Sony's modern lineup. With only three mainline console entries, a PSP remake and a PlayStation Move spin-off, it's definitely due for a new installment. And I think now more so than ever with the PS5 would be the best opportunity, all because of the DualSense. When the original game released, it entirely focused around requiring the dual analog controller to control many of the gadgets to capture the escaped apes and other gameplay elements, becoming a very key example of utilising new controller technology to really enhance the gameplay. Now if you're lucky enough to own a PS5, you've likely played a little game called Astro's Playroom and got to see what the DualSense controller is really capable of. True, it's not necessary by any means, but it creates such a cool and immersive effect while playing. It's so good I can feel how depressed the characters really are. Now imagine how they could utilise this with a brand new Ape Escape game. Using the haptic feedback, the gyro, touchpad, the mic, they could really go all out there for these with gadgets and gameplay ideas. Yeah, it's all well and good seeing myself capture an ape on screen, but what if I could feel it? I bet it feels like happiness. It would just seem crazy to me that Sony would pass up an opportunity to really push the DualSense's features, and I couldn't think of a better match for it than Ape Escape. Come on Sony, surely you can give Ape Escape a chance, and also do something with Sly Cooper while you're at it, and uh, maybe Jack and Daxter, just fucking do something with your franchises, Sony, Jesus. Let's take some time away from the happy slappy platforming crappy to delve into some survival horror. More specifically, the apex of AAA horror, Resident Evil, a franchise very familiar with remakes. In fact, it could be argued that this franchise set an industry standard for what a remake should be. The GameCube remake of the original Resi really still holds up to this day, the Resident Evil 2 remake is one of my favourite games of all time. Freemake was a thing. So where am I going with this? Now, some of you may be thinking, oh, surely this is leading to a Resi 4 remake. And while, yeah, that would be interesting, I think the HD ports currently hold up both graphically and in terms of gameplay. No, what I'm suggesting may actually be rather more blasphemous. Just hear me out here. Another remake of RE1, but in the style of the RE2 remake. Now I know, RE1 is so synonymous with the style of classic Resident Evil. We're so used to exploring the Spencer Mansion with those fixed camera angles in mind. And that's why I think if you're gonna try and remake it again, do it in a fashion that makes it different enough to justify it just like how RE2 did. Much like how the original remake changed some things and made additions with stuff like the Crimson Heads and Lisa Trevor, go even further and make changes that would make more sense with this other gameplay style. It would just be really cool to see this setting in a third person perspective, though you could already do that in Umbrella Corpse, but why would you do that to yourself? I'd also just love to see the Spencer Mansion in the new RE engine. It would look glorious. And I'm just curious more than anything to see what it would be like. And yeah, I know the idea of remaking a remake kind of sounds dumb, but it still wouldn't be the stupidest thing this franchise has done. Okay, so I feel like I'm rather alone on this one, but I thought ukulele was alright. The kickstarted spiritual successor to Banjo-Kazooie received some of the most polarising reviews I have seen for a game like this. But there was definitely more of a lean to the critical side of things, and I don't quite feel like all of it was deserved. It achieves what it sets out to do, creating another 90s style 3D collectathon platformer. It controlled really nicely, looked nice, made collectibles feel much more justified and purposeful, and had that very tongue-in-cheek charm and tone that we expected from those devs. I'm still gonna bitch about it though. It was still undeniably flawed, and I think that's mainly due to Platonic trying to make it more akin to and building off from Banjo-Tooie. Which, yeah, I guess makes sense from a dev perspective, however, I feel following Kazooie's format would have worked a lot better here. Ukulele's level design, while strong in its core platforming, was really barren and sparse in each world. Certain elements felt underutilised and those stupid minigames were just such a pointless addition and didn't need to be there. A sequel going for the smaller, more dense and focused level style of the first Banjo, I think would not only make each world flow better, but also make them more memorable. And I'd rather have more smaller levels as opposed to less that are larger with a game like this, and just overall expand and explore on the existing mechanics and cut out all the fluff. I really want to see these guys do another 3D platformer, and seeing how good the Impossible Lair was, I'm sure they could learn from this and give us a much more refined and better sequel.
Going back to remakes now with more survival horror and this time one series that I don't feel got the love or recognition it deserved, especially for how influential it was for the genre even before Resident Evil existed. Clock Tower was a series best known for its first two entries on the Famicom and the PlayStation respectively, in which the player controls the main character via a point and click interface. It requires players to explore the environment, find items, solve puzzles, splice them with some tense run and hide gameplay as you're stalked by the series iconic killer, the Scissor Man. But scissors aren't scary- <laughs> The first game, especially for 1995, was groundbreaking for its time. Considering how it managed to create a really haunting atmosphere and tense game, gameplay from the limited hardware. The PS1 installment is a direct sequel, carrying on the story, taking you through multiple scenarios with different characters, all with a slightly more corny and B-movie-esque horror tone to it. The clock tower murders are fascinating research material for me. I think this man is clinically dead. However, this time it was of course in a 3D space. Either way, both games were pivotal in the genre's history, despite being very dated by today's standards. And the point and click style made it distinct from other horror offerings of the time. And after fading into obscurity, I'd love to see this series, these two games specifically, given the HD treatment. And I'd be way open for how they would tackle this. They could keep the point and click style, but I'd be down for exploring alternate avenues. Maybe give the player free movement, have it in third person, first person, go nuts. Take advantage of the modern hardware to rejuvenate these horror classics for the modern era. Now true, there is Nightcry, a spiritual successor to the series created by Hifumi Kono, the director of the first two Clock Tower games. But I think the Scissor Man needs his time to shine again as one of survival horror's greatest icons. He deserved better than whatever the fuck this is, damn it. You know, I've kind of had classic LEGO games on the mind recently. It's a dangerous rabbit hole. My therapy bills are piling. Looking back at the LEGO media era of those games, I was wondering if any of these would have great sequel potential. And then it hit me, of course. LEGO Racists. I fully intend to cover the LEGO Racers duology at some point in the future, as I've got plenty to say about both. They are strangely different though, for being direct sequels to each other. The first game stood apart from other kart racers at the time by allowing players to build their own characters and carts from LEGO bricks, as well as a unique power-up system and a goofy charm derived from LEGO's own original properties, albeit having some very basic driving mechanics. The second one is really bizarre in that it continues where the first one left off, yet completely reworks the game and feels somewhat alien. They completely change the driving style to something somewhat realistic and physics based, but still treating the races as if it were a kart racer. And the tracks as opposed to all being unique had five open worlds, each with five tracks laid out around said worlds, making them just feel really repetitive and dull and completely stripping them of any personality. Oh, and also everyone sounds like they're having a stroke. <laughs> And more so than anything, the game is just rather dull. However, it did have a much more expansive car creation tool, some nice ideas with the open-ended adventure mode, and a really cool addition with the physics of the car bricks breaking off during races. I would love the idea of another LEGO Racers, but with tons more building options to customise the characters and cars, while making a really satisfying driving style, perhaps with the brick physics of the second game, and include a mix of the open worlds of two, but with the individual tracks of the first game. Combine the best elements of both games and give us a great modern kart racer to stand amongst the likes of Mario Kart 8 and CTR Nitro Fueled, I think it would be awesome. And just don't let TT Games do it or we'll end up with the same fucking game we've had for the past 16 years. <laughs> well, we've already talked about one Crash 5 today, so surely talking about another one couldn't hurt? Now, I need to state very clearly, I actually don't think there should be any more Crash remakes. It's not needed and the franchise should focus on new stuff. Stop asking for a Crash Bash remake, it's naff and a remake will not fix its inherent problems. I will die on that hill. 
But if you had to force my hand, I would say that if any other game in the series should be remade, it would be Twin Sanity. It was an interesting take on the series gameplay, playing out like one big adventure, all with a great sense of humour. However, I do feel that it is rather overrated for what it is. It's a very fun game, albeit an unfocused, messy and broken one. And that's because Twin Sanity's scope and ambition far outweighed the time and resources the devs had. Because the one thing more interesting than what Twin Sanity is, is what it wasn't. It's widely known now that there were tons of concepts and ideas left on the cutting room floor, several whole level ideas, characters and plot beats that never made it. And even as is, the game is very rough around the edges, practically oozing with bugs and glitches. So what if we got a director's cut of Twin Sanity, so to speak? All these scrapped ideas being implemented and actually have the game not shit itself or break every few minutes. Hell, even the director of the original game has ex expressed his interest in doing just this, so I guess it's not entirely out of the realm of plausibility. Again, it's completely superfluous, but I'm just saying I think it would be cool. Some things would look nice in HD. You cheating bastard! <sighs> yeah, I know, I'm a fool for expecting Rare to do anything with its classic IPs that isn't a fucking abomination, but a man could dream. With Perfect Dark, yeah, we'll see how it is. If we see any more from Banjo, perhaps, but I'm not holding my breath. But the one that is still rather sore for me is Conquer. And yeah, I know I'm playing Live and Reloaded because I think it's the better version. Fight me. Despite not being a big financial hit upon release, the original Conquer was and still is a bona fide cult classic. And while the concept of creating a raunchy and crude experience from such cartoony and innocent platforming character stereotypes may not be that shocking or humorous now, it's still one of my favourite platformers just due to its bizarre, weird, mean spirited tone. And I do treat it more as a fun experience rather than an amazing game. There really isn't anything quite like it. And we sadly never got to see a follow-up. And yeah, the ending did leave things fairly conclusive, but left on that rather empty and melancholy beat that I feel could have led into more for a sequel. Now, one was actually planned at one point called Conquer's Other Bad Day that sadly got canned when Microsoft bought Rare. And just recently, the director Chris Seaver unearthed tons of concept art and story details on what the game's story would have been. Along with level ideas, gameplay concepts, it sounded like a perfect sequel and it sucks that we never got to see it come to fruition. Now I imagine a sequel of Conquer nowadays would probably have to be a complete redo of this concept. Seeing as it was made for its time and comedic sensibilities do constantly change with what is relevant and humorous. It would be great to see a Conquer game that takes shots at the modern gaming industry while taking advantage of the more advanced hardware to provide a great gameplay experience at the same time. But I guess if modern Rareware is anything to go by, we'll just have to settle for these classic IPs sitting around with their thumbs up their asses. Finally, let's end this with perhaps my most wanted remake, a remake that I know I'm not alone with wanting. A true cult classic if there ever was, the pinnacle of gaming in 2003, the Simpsons Hit and Run. While not as mechanically deep as the game it was parodying, Hit and Run more than made up for it by just being tons of fun to play, all while incorporating that charm and wit of the earlier eras of The Simpsons. Just exploring Springfield and having fun. You could kick your wife, drive about, kick your wife, take part in races, kick your wife, sky's the limit. It's one of my personal favourites, and I know a remake or sequel is highly demanded. Now, I don't think a sequel is necessary or that practical, people are very fondly attached to the original game, so I think a remake would make more sense here. And I think they could do a lot to refine and expand upon what's already there. Maybe consider combining the three main areas into one large open world, with new areas connecting them, add more missions, more vehicles, and perhaps seeing as how the original adopts its gameplay style from the PS2 era GTAs, maybe let a remake take cues from the more recent GTA titles. There's so much cool shit they could do while bringing back a beloved cult classic and I don't know, it just feels like it makes sense. The game is really nostalgic for so many and probably would do well considering the demand for it. And surely if Spongebob Battle for Bikini Bottom can get a remake, The Simpsons Hit and Run can too. Who could do it? I don't know, but just as long as they can recapture the fun of the original while expanding upon it. Just wanna kill my wife in 4K, come on now. And those are some of my most wanted remakes and sequels. Now of course there's plenty more I'd love to see that I didn't have time to discuss 
discuss. For example, I think a new 3D Rayman would be awesome, a Pac-Man World 4 would be really cool, and I'd love to see seemingly dormant franchises like Banjo-Kazooie and Sly Cooper get new installments, and yes, I am 3D platforming's bitch, why do you ask? So yeah, while I do think we should be striving for new and original ideas, I still think it's beneficial to occasionally give a fresh take on old experiences while expanding and exploring the potential within existing ones, which is why I think we need to see a Knack 3, because surely the third time round it won't be dog shit.